So Pastor's been going through, uh, he's been doing a topical study on sin, and it's really been eye-opening. We were talking about a little bit this morning and where sin is in the world, and we know that it's all around us, right? It doesn't take much to, to see what's going on in the world, to see how people are living for themselves and not living for God. So just to kind of recap the stuff that he was going through, and then I think he's going to continue next week. So he's talking about the pro-sin agenda consequences of our sin and the foolishness of and the myths of that that makes things worse you know and as we're going through that you know god put it on my heart to really dive in and understand what it means to have justice and as i'm starting to go through these things and understand what justice is i start to see a clear contrast between what the world defines as justice and what god defines as justice and sometimes it's very difficult to understand what God is teaching us through those things. I mean, we can get caught up in all the chaos that's going on, and even in our own lives, and myself included, uh, we've endured so much hardship at, at specific times throughout our life that we couldn't see the end result of those things. So we see that all, all over the place. Even now, as I go through various trials, it becomes difficult to know what God really has planned for me in the midst of all those things. But we know where to go to understand what God has for us in terms of what his plan is and his will that we should be committed to. And uh, regardless of our belief and where we come from, there are people in segments of society, as we go out and share the gospel, we're asking people, what is sin? And what do you guys think about sin? There are some people that flat out have no idea, like Pastor talked about a couple weeks ago. There are some people that have a clear understanding. Even in my own life, before I came to know the Lord, if someone came to me and said, hey, what is sin? I could probably list off a few things, but was I willing to acknowledge it for what it was? No, I wasn't. I was caught up in my own sense of justice. But we see a lot of things going on now. We've got racial strife, pandemics, natural disasters, and a society, an American society more specifically, that's increasingly uh, intent on abolishing any resemblance of resemblance of morality and the way our society functions. It's become to a point where they live for an egotistic pleasure. And I, like I said, I was there too. I will do what I feel is right, regardless of the consequence. And I think here pretty soon we're going to look at that second American Gospel video when we start resuming our equipping hour and learn what postmodernism is and, and this pre prevailing thought that's coming through our society that's leading people, even in Christian circles, further and further away from God and to something that is not the truth, the truth that is found in Jesus Christ, the truth that is in the gospel, the truth that we have to stand firm on every day that we live our lives as we are constantly in a battle. And there are actions and choices that we make now that are going to affect generations to come. And we see those consequences of that sin, like Pastor talked about a few weeks back, and how that's playing out in our society now, right? There are times where there is justice and injustice being committed, sin on top of sin, People answer sin with sin. One thing that Pastor brought up as well was, you know, when your kid's yelling at somebody, what do you do? You turn around and yell at your kid, and you put sin on top of sin, and we see that all around us. But we know that God has plans for us. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. The future and a hope. Our future lies in Jesus we can live now in the present for Him. Our future lies in Him as well. He gives us hope. Our hope is not found and sustained in this world. And we see throughout all the things that go on in the world, how their hope is in these things. And I was the same way, like I said before. Um, and I want to start with that, just so we understand that, where we go back for the truth, to know what the plans that God has made for us, to know where our hope is, and it's in Jesus Himself, through the God-breathed Word of God, right? Through the Holy Bible. We've got to go back to that because this is the source of truth for everything that we need to understand how to live our lives in the midst of a society that appears to be in complete chaos, and some would say really is. And I wanted to start with that, not as some type of disclaimer, but to make sure that we remember where the truth is and where to seek it. We have to make sure we're in the Bible every day seeking those truths that God has laid out for us through His Word. And today, as anyone who seeks God will want to, as all of us are here, we're here to celebrate, we're here to worship, we're here to thank God for what He's done, and we're here to learn. Uh, we want to build on the truth of God's words. We are not just believers, but it's so important to remember that we are followers of Christ. 
the last time I was up here, I preached on counting the cost. And that was a super impactful sermon on me, you know, especially in light of sharing the gospel. I'm glad that we got back into uh, going out and doing those things and sharing the gospel because it's very difficult. Your flesh wants to fight against that. There's times where your flesh doesn't want you to pray. There's times where your flesh doesn't want you to come to church. There's times where your flesh is not going to want you to get in the Bible. But the Holy Spirit sustains us. We need to go seek God in the midst of those things so we can come through those things, no matter what it is. We need to be obedient, even to the point that, to, to the point that God might even ask for our own lives and take everything away from us. You know, this last week we went on a great camping trip, and I'm so thankful for that time that we have to be out in God's creation, to really slow down and think about Him and appreciate that and have that fellowship and things like that. And I loved it so much that I wanted to continue on it for another week. But then I had to ask myself, is this something that I'm willing to sacrifice for the Lord? Am I willing to lay everything aside for Him to the point of pure obedience? And we've got to make sure that we're in that position. Um, but to continue on, 1 John 2, 3 says that by this we know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. We have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. He has asked us to stay in His Word. He has asked us to come to Him. He has asked us to seek Him in all things that go in our lives. Everything. We need to go make sure we go back to the Lord in those things. We need to commit ourselves to giving Him all that He seeks over every facet of our lives. We have to hold fast to the truth as we live in a fallen world, one that clearly has the mark of Satan all over it. Even non-believers see the chaos that is erupting around. There are clear segments of our society, like I mentioned, that have come, become increasingly content on coming over top of each other. And as Christians, as the ones who have the true truth in the Word of God, the people that know God for who He is and where He's calling us to be, we have to stand bold in those foundations and the foundation that He has laid. By this we know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. We must continue to keep those commandments. We have to seek God in all different ways. And we need discernment to be able to do that. We need to know the difference between what's right and wrong. Even when other churches come out and they told it, and what we're going to see in just a little bit, they told they pervert the Word of God so they can live out some pleasure. They create a God in their own mind so they can live out the pleasure that they want. Not things that bring pleasure to God, but things that bring pleasure to them. And we need to be asking ourselves, do we live a life that pleases God? Or am I only seeking to please myself? The one attribute of God that is quickly starting to fade away among believers, this understanding is starting to fade away, is His enactment of justice. You know, we talked about that a lot. There's a lot of churches that don't want to preach and talk about justice. You'll hear mercy and forgiveness a lot, but you're not going to hear justice. You're going to, talk, you're going to hear grace, but you're not going to talk about justice. And you can't have mercy and forgiveness, you can't have grace without first understanding justice and what justice is and what God determines as justice, not as what we determine as justice. So it's super important that we remember that. Truth and justice, to me, are almost two sides of the same coin because you have to have truth, you have to understand the gospel truth before you can understand what justice really is in terms of how God has determined it. Um, just as Savior and, Savior and Lord are, they're the same way, right? We have to make sure we understand that truth. It is so important that we know this, because without it, everything that we understand in terms of what the Bible has laid out from the Old Testament to the New Testament, speaking about Jesus throughout the complete Word of God, we, will, we cannot do that unless we understand justice. Um, there is no need for any truth beyond that without need, understanding the need for Christ as a result of the justice we deserve. We will never be able to comprehend what it means to be forgiven. How, how, I mean, that's, that's the Christian message. We have rebelled against God, and we are forgiven in that. And to be shown the greatest mercy of all, an act of grace that puts us in right standing with a holy and just God. I mean, think about that. If you, if you think about God and His holiness, and how we could never set forth, set, stand before Him until we knew the Lord. We have to make sure we understand that, and we, we know what we deserve. And how do we articulate that? We articulate that through the Word of God. And, you know, every time I get up here, I kind of speak about a little testimony about myself. And the reason why I do this is because 
it helps develop a little bit of ethos. A ethos is something like credibility. So I've been on the outside looking in. I've been, I, I, before I was born again, and which we should all be born again believers, um, I determined my own sense of justice, okay? I was more of an agnostic in a lot of different ways. I was like, okay, well, there's pro- there might not be a God. I subscribe to every worldly point of view you can probably imagine. Um, but if there is a God, you know what he'll do? He'll take me and he'll say, Brandon, you are so good. You took care of three kids that were not your own. You're so good. You know, I, you know, here's a little credit for you. And the scale starts to tip into a heavenly way. You know, and I start to come away from hell a little more. Oh, uh, you took care of a lady who had so much difficulty in her life, and you've done all these wonderful and good things. And it wasn't until I came to understand the true gospel of Christ that I realized my total depravity. I realized my true sinful nature of who I was. My sense of justice was so perverted and so clouded by what the world determined to be just. And we'll talk about that some more. I even looked at the Bible, the, the Word of God. I didn't read it, of course. But I looked at it as a great, and i said this before, as a great self-help book. I would direct my kids to it. Yeah, that's good for them to go read it. Maybe they need to learn and understand that. But me, I'm good. You know, I know, I know what's right and wrong. I clearly have a definition of what's right and wrong. So when people of the world come at me today as a Christian... And they're like, well, you don't understand, you don't understand. I'm like, no, man, I've been there. I know exactly. Before my mind was renewed in a Romans 12 sense as to the justice that God has planned for us, for those who are unrepentant and do not come to Him, and the mercy and forgiveness that grace is, and the grace that has been given to us through His Son, through those things I was able to finally comprehend what it means to be born again and to know God for who He is and start to conduct and live my life in a manner that was pleasing to Him. My idea of justice, like I said, was measured by what society and culture consider to be just, not by God's standards of justice. Going back to that verse in John, uh, and we know that the world seeks its own brand of justice and therefore lacks the capacity to understand and keep the commandments of God. When you're so focused on the world's brand of justice, you cannot understand the commandments of God. You can't follow Him. You can't do the things that He has asked for us to do. We cannot keep justice as a result of that. And we see that in our society. We see so many injustices that are occurring, injustice on top of injustice, and it's always changing in our society. That One day they'll have one standard of justice, the next day it's a different one. When God's word stands true throughout all the generations that have come to, have come to pass and all the generations that will be after us, right? So there are many things that we need to understand. And we need one thing to understand is that God is above us, right? Uh, and Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right there that tells us that we need to seek him in comprehending these things. If he is the sustainer of all things, he sustains this earth, he sustains gravity, which if it was off by even, like, a millionth of a fraction, we would all be turned into chaos. All these things that you see around us, the trees that give us oxygen, everything that has been the human body, everything that has been set and put in place, how could you not step back and go that there is a creator in charge of all these things and know that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways and better than our ways. And we have to remember that. Our culture and our society has turned so far away from that that they're not, they, you know, they don't even stop and look at these things. Before I knew the Lord, <laughs> I didn't stop either. I was so caught up in my own self-pleasure trying to measure some standard that was out of control, that was based on what the world determined was right and wrong, that I didn't even look up and notice the clouds anymore. I didn't even see the trees for what they were. I couldn't even stop and listen to a bird sing a song and praise God through his song. I couldn't even do those things. I couldn't even appreciate... Uh, the children that I had right in front of me. There were so many things, and, and it all went back to what I thought was right and wrong in terms of seeking a sense of justice. And these troubles in our society, they're nothing new. If you go back and read the Old Testament, you see time and time again, and we'll look at a few verses here in just a minute, as to where people have come away from God in so many different ways. This is nothing new, and it shouldn't be anything new to us, right? And we need to thank God for the holy covenant that we have through the blood of Christ 
to come to understand and know these things as to what they are. I heard a sermon that was really good, and, it said, and the pastor said that justice is getting what we deserve, mercy is not getting what we deserve, and grace is getting what we don't deserve. I'm sure you guys have heard that before, but it's always something to think about. Justice is getting what we deserve. As Christians, we understand that we deserve death. Beyond that, we deserve eternal damnation and hell. I thought it was awesome when Brother James French got up here last week and he was speaking about sharing the gospel and he was talking about, you know, it, we have a purpose, just like Pastor prayed about this morning. We have a purpose here on earth. We do. We are here for a reason. To get the justice that we deserve, God would send us straight to hell because that's where we deserve to go as we come away from Him and His holiness and we don't seek Him in anything that we do. Understanding what it means to be just, it implies that there is a right and wrong way of conducting oneself. There are consequences for every choice that we make in life, and Pastor hit that in his sermon when he was talking about sin. And there are things that are in motion which sit beyond our control, and God is in control of those things. The basic starting point of realizing justice is knowing that the choices we make carry a specific amount of weight with them. If you are in Christ, you know the justice that you deserve, then you should know that your choices and the choices that you make have consequences. And that's why it's so important that we seek God. God is the one that determines what's right and wrong. He is the primary mover in all matters concerning consequence. He sets the course for our lives, determining the after effects of the choices we make. And when we come to understand the holy uh, position of God and the depravity of our nature in relation to Him and His perfection, we realize that we have fallen way short of keeping those commandments that He asks us to keep. If we meditate and, comp and contemplate and comprehend who He is, you know, we should just fall before Him in all things and, and seek to understand what justice is in terms of how He determines it. And then there's mercy and not getting what we deserve, right? So mercy is saying, you know what, you're not going to get eternal hell. You're not going to get what you deserve. If someone went before a judge and the judge says, I'm going to grant you clemency or mercy, people have just gotten away with something, right? And God gives us that to believers and non-believers alike. We have what's called common grace. Everybody that's here on this earth, everybody that's born and walking around is sustained through common grace. God allows them to live in, in the understanding how they've rebelled against Him. They don't understand it. God understands it. We as Christians, we understand it because we have something else, and that's saving grace. And grace is getting what you don't deserve. And we have to understand that. Hebrews 4.16 says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Every single one of us, when we understand our depravity before God, is in need. We are in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus, as we all know. Um, we have gained so much in our relationship with the Lord. If you, I mean, just stop and think about it. Think about all that has been given to you in the freedom of Christ for what He has done for us on the cross. You, you, we need to make sure we're preaching that to ourselves every day. A couple of years ago, we went over the gospel every day, right? The GED. we got to make sure and go back and, and preach the gospel to ourselves and getting that every single day, the gospel every day. It's one thing for God to pardon us, us of sin and thereby grant mercy or clemency. It's an altogether different thing when we understand how He achieved it through the blood of Christ and the gift that He has given us. When someone gives you a gift, when someone truly gives you a gift, and they mean it, they don't expect anything in return. A lot of times I give gifts, I expect things in return. I should, probably shouldn't do that. But when God gives a gift, and He gives us the gift of Christ, Jesus, He's not expecting anything in return. He expects us to follow Him and understand what it means to know that, but He gives it over. He, Jesus gave Himself over to us. And we need to remember and understand that God has done through His Son. And when you know that, it's not about your works, right? This is not a, a works-based faith that we live out, right? It's about understanding what God did for us through the grace of His Son that He has given us and saying, God, I, I don't deserve this gift that you're giving me. I love you, God, for what you have done for me. Help me to live out a life in obedience to you, God. When you love someone, you're going to cherish them. You're going to adore them. And that's how we need to look at Jesus every single day of our lives. Jesus, I'm so thankful for what you've done for me. 
I'm so thankful that you've called me out of the darkness and into the light. You've opened my eyes to what's just, what's right, what's fair, mercy, forgiveness, true mercy and forgiveness. And then on top of all that, grace. Grace in getting what we don't deserve. And justice is super important to God's people. If you go back to the Old Testament, you go to Deuteronomy 16.20, we see justice and only justice you shall pursue, that you may live and possess the land which your Lord God is giving you. So God says you must pursue justice. We have to have a right understanding of what justice is, brought to us by mercy and forgiveness and the grace of God, and then we have to pursue it at the same time, day in and day out. We have to pursue what's righteous in the eyes of God, not what's righteous in our own eyes. That you may live, we have to pursue it in order to live, to live with each other, to subdue the sin that so easily entangles us, as Hebrews says. We have to make sure we live out that truth and possess the land. When I read this and I think about it, I think about our country, right? I think about all the things that are going on, not just our country, but the world. In order for us to possess the land and live together and to do the things that God has asked us to do, we have to make sure that we are pursuing godly justice. We are pursuing justice in terms of how He determines it, not in terms of how we determine it. Isaiah 59.15 says, Yes, truth is lacking, and he who turns aside from evil and makes himself pray. Now the Lord saw, and it was displeasing in His sight, that there was no justice. Truth and justice. Truth is lacking. We have to go back to the truth of God. The sustainer and creator of all things holds all the truth that we need to know. We have to seek Him. If we seek Him, it won't be lacking anymore. And he who turns aside from evil makes himself pray. Christians are becoming more and more persecuted in this day and age. You know, uh, we, we heard a testimony from Brother Alex who, um, at his college in his dorm, they were trying to get him to affirm their lifestyle. But when he just said, and said, spoke up and said merely, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, he was shunned and cast out immediately, almost immediately. And the same is true for all of us. As we continue to live out our lives for God, you should come across hardship. When you continue to live out and pursue justice in terms of how God determines things as just, you should come across hardship. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen more and more. And we see that more and more in our society as they come away from what God determines is just. It's nothing new. I mean, we're going back to the Old Testament, right? We're seeing how this happened to God's people over and over and over again. Thankfully, we have the Word of God. We have all these things right here. We're on this side of Christ, so we can go back and read and learn all these things that have been given to us by the Holy Spirit, so we can understand that more and more. Um, so it's super important that we do that. In Exodus 23, 2, it says, You shall not follow the masses in doing evil, nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after a multitude in order to pervert justice. Man, this, when we think about this in the context of our modern day, it sounds so familiar. It is nothing new with the pervasiveness of sin in our culture, right? You shall not follow the masses in doing evil. We are set apart. When you are born again and you are a believer in Christ, you take on the holiness of God. You should be set apart. You should be the other. We do not follow people in doing evil. If God has said, don't do it, don't do it. Stay away from it. Um, and we, might, we have to make sure that if we testify in such things, we don't turn after the multitude, as so many churches have done in our day, seeking them in those things that are perverting those things to turn justice up on its head so they can seek the things that pleasure them the most just as I did before I come to know, come to know the Lord. So we got to make sure we don't do that. Habakkuk 1.4 Therefore the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. You see this all through the Old Testament, over and over again. Justice, justice, justice. Justice is never upheld, for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore justice comes out perverted. We are surrounded we have to make sure that we stand firm on the foundation of Christ. We have so much. We have so many great resources given to us through our Lord, through the Holy Spirit that we have in our lives. And then we look at God's law, and we look at man's law, which we talked before, and we see so many segments of our society 
where man's law says, well, you can go do this, you can go sleep around your wife, you can go do whatever. You know, it's not necessarily a crime for so many things. Uh, viewing pornography is okay. Getting angry and, you know, raising your voice at people. That's a, there's no laws against that, right? That's man's law. But then we have God's law and God's determination of justice that comes above that. God says, come away from that filthiness, that unrighteousness. Seek my justice. Seek what I determine is right and wrong. And do not be perverted by those things. It has become perverted. we got to make sure we come away from it. Um, Proverbs 28.5 Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all things. Just as I said many times before throughout the sermon, we have to seek Him in all things. That's the only way we're going to understand it. And God's Word makes that clear. The men that continue to do evil over and over, just as I did, over and over, and don't repent of their sin, don't come away from those things, don't, don't put their life in the hands of Christ, don't humble themselves before Him, they will never understand what they're doing is wrong. Their sense of justice is completely perverted as a result of that. Psalm 25, 9. He leads the humble in justice, and he teaches the humble his way. He leads the humble in justice. We have to humble ourselves before God. We have to bow down before Him and understand that He's the one that sets the course, not us. We're not the one that sets the course. We must humble. And through that, He teaches the humble His way. The only way for us to ever learn is to go back and understand our depravity before God justice, mercy, forgiveness, and grace, and then understand His way through a result of us understanding our position before Him. That's so important. And then also, you know, you think about all the things that are going on in this modern day with the, uh, you know, people coming against each other, and it really comes down to a lot of times the value of human life. And one thing as I was going through this, I'm like, man, justice is so important, but how do we get people to understand this segment of justice in terms of determining the value of human life. And to do that, you got to go back to His Word once again and go all the way back to Genesis, right? Genesis 1, 27, God created man in His own image. The image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created him. When I look around and I see people, whether they know the Lord or not, I see value. I see something that God has created, something precious, something of God as He has created them. It's so important that we remember that. When we get upset with each other, um, you know, and, we, and we're angry with the things that are going on, we need to understand who people are and that God loves people as He has created them. And it's so important, too, when we go out and share the gospel, they go, you know what, you're, you're destined for something very bad if you don't come and put your faith in Christ. I know God loves you. I know He values you. And I love you. And as a result... Let me tell you the good news of the gospel of Christ. So we have to make sure we do that. Um, and then, you know, we talk about abortion, right? The, 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 the living born and the living unborn. God values all human life. Psalm 139, 13, we know this one, right? For you have formed my inward parts, you woke me in my mother's womb. I was having a conversation with my older son one time, and we were talking about God, and I was like, who created you, man? He was like, he's like, well, you did I was like, really? Well, explain to me how I got in there, put your arms together, put your legs on, and did all these things. I'm like, son, I didn't really do hardly anything when it came down to it. Like, God is the one who created you. God is the one who sustains you, even in the womb. It's important that we remember that. There's so much injustice today where people value lives, which we should, here on earth. They, they put so much value in the people that are living, but they don't think, or the people that are born... But they don't think about the unborn, and we need to make sure we consider that. So what is our role in the church, right? I spoke about that a little bit. We need to make sure that we're going out and sharing those gospel truths. If you have a concern for justice, and you understand your position before God, and what it is to have mercy and forgiveness and grace, we need to be that, uh, where Jesus says in Matthew 5, You are a light in the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and, gives, and it gives light to all who are in the house. We have to stand up for the truth that is in Christ. We have to be the light in the world. So many times lately, my prayers have been centered around the darkness that keeps enveloping this world. And how true Christians are getting fewer and far and harder to find. People that stand up for the truth that is in the Bible. People that stand up for Christ and what He 
preached and what he stood for, right? And what God says we should stand for. We have to remember what Jesus said too, where all the law hangs, right? Is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And we need to make sure if you do love your neighbor, like I said, you're going out and sharing the gospel. You're saying, come away from those bad things. Here's truth and justice in Jesus. Understand what that means. Come away from that. Come away from the sin. Come away from what waits you for eternity and eternity in hell. Now I'll close with this. In Jeremiah 33:15, it says, and this is the Old Testament, In those days at the, at the time I caused a righteous branch of David to spring forth. Who is that righteous branch? That's Jesus. Jeremiah is speaking about Jesus. And he shall execute justice and righteousness on earth. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back to execute justice and righteousness. Um, he stated clearly that those who are not for him are what? They're against him. They are against him. If you are not for Jesus, you are against him. There is right and there is wrong. There is righteousness and there is unrighteousness. For those of you who choose not to follow, you better be sure that the truth you seek is indeed the truth, which I can tell you that it's not. Being a believer, anybody who comes and brings any other truth besides the gospel truth of Christ to me, that is not truth. I will share the truth with you. And if you don't want to listen to me, and I'll send you to somebody else, you don't want to listen to them, then go on your way. You know, we plant the seed, God does the watering. For those of you who choose not to follow, you better be sure that that truth is indeed the truth. The world is full of deception, and chances are good you are being deceived. Chances are, are beyond good. You are being deceived. If you believe that the truth is not in Christ, and that He cannot execute justice. And for those who don't believe, I always ask, uh, if Jesus was who He says He was, and the Bible is true, would you believe it? And you'd be surprised. A lot of people will say no. They'll say no. I, I, Jesus, if that was true, and the Bible were true, I still wouldn't believe it. Because they enjoy their sin. They don't have any understanding of justice, mercy, forgiveness, or grace. They have no understanding and no capacity to understand that. And, and there are other people who say, yeah, I will. And Jesus says what? Seek me and you'll find me. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it will be open. He's going to show the truth. And if there's anybody today that's struggling with doubt or any questions that they have, seek him in those things, and he will show that truth to us. Jesus reminds us in Matthew that we'll be held account for even the words we speak on Judgment Day. Can you imagine just your words, like just those words, which do have tremendous power and do hurt us, imagine our actions that we're going to be held account for. Imagine that. We have to understand that. Pastor spoke last week and he said that the perfect image of justice is hell. And hell is what awaits people who do not put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we know that all too well.